Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover why we keep, switch, flip when we divide fractions. You may also hear keep, change, flip or multiply by the reciprocal. These all mean the same thing. Now before we get into our dividing fractions example, we need to review and fully understand a few things about fractions. We'll start with fractions representing division. A division problem can be set up as a fraction. So for number one, we have eight divided by four equals two. Now we can set that up as a fraction. We can set it up as eight divided by four equals two. So again, we need to know that fractions represent division. The second thing that we need to understand is that anything over one, so a denominator of one, equals itself. For example, five over one equals five. So again, anything over one equals itself. Under number three here, we have fractions that have the same numerator and denominator. For example, seven over seven, seven sevenths. Anytime the numerator and denominator are the same, that fraction represents one whole. So seven sevenths or seven over seven, this equals one. Again, same numerator, same denominator equals one. The fourth thing that we need to understand, equivalent fractions. Now remember, in order to keep a fraction equivalent, whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top or vice versa. And we can use multiplication or division. This will give us an equivalent fraction. For example, three fourths equals how many eighths? Well, we know that four times two equals eight. Four times two equals eight. Now, whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top in order to keep this equivalent. So three times two gives us six. So three fourths is equivalent to six eighths. Both of these fractions have the same value. So we need to understand equivalent fractions. Lastly, number five here, we have reciprocals, which is flipping a fraction. So the reciprocal of four sevenths is seven fourths. So this is the reciprocal of four sevenths. Now I'm multiplying four sevenths by its reciprocal seven fourths to show that we get one whenever we multiply a fraction by its reciprocal. So four sevenths times seven fourths, well, multiply straight across, four times seven is 28. Now let's multiply the denominators, the bottom numbers, seven times four is 28. So we end up with 28 28 ths and we know that if we have the same number on top, the numerator, as we do the bottom, the denominator, this is going to equal one whole or one. So reciprocals are the last thing that we need to understand. And again, a reciprocal, we flip the fraction. The numerator becomes the denominator and the denominator becomes the numerator. And when we multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, we get one. Now we are ready to see why we keep switch flip, or maybe you refer to it as keep change flip or multiply by the reciprocal. Remember, all of those things mean the same thing. Let's use three fifths divided by one fourth for our example here. We know that we can set up a division problem as a fraction. Fractions represent division. So let's set up three fifths divided by one fourth as a fraction. We get three fifths over one fourth. This gives us a fraction over a fraction. So two fractions making up one fraction. This is called a complex fraction. A complex fraction is a fraction where the numerator, denominator, or both are a fraction. Now, once we have our complex fraction, we want to get our denominator to equal one. We know that anything over one equals itself, and that is going to make this much more manageable. Well, how do we get our denominator to equal one? 
we need to multiply it by its reciprocal, flip the fraction. So let's multiply 1 fourth by 4 over 1. And again, we are doing this so we get that denominator to equal 1 because we know that anything over 1 equals itself. Now since we are multiplying our denominator by 4 over 1, remember, in order to keep a fraction equivalent, whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top or vice versa. This keeps everything equivalent. The value doesn't change. So we need to multiply our numerator by 4 over 1 as well. So this is going to give us, well, 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. Remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So again, 1 times 4 is 4, and then 4 times 1 is 4. Let's do our numerator. So 3 times 4, right here, is going to give us 12. And then 5 times 1 is going to give us 5. So we have 12 fifths over 4 fourths. Now we know that when we have the same numerator and denominator, the fraction equals 1. So let's rewrite this as 12 fifths over 1. This is our new complex fraction. It's equivalent to what we started with. But now we have a denominator of 1. And we know that anything over 1 just equals itself. So our answer is 12 fifths. Now, 12 fifths is an improper fraction, so we want to change this to a mixed number. We do that by dividing our numerator by the denominator, so 12 divided by 5. How many whole groups of 5 can we pull out of 12? Well, 2. Now that doesn't hit 12 exactly, we have a remainder of 2, and we keep our denominator of 5 the same. Now 2 and 2 fifths, our fractional part, is in simplest form, so we are done. 2 and 2 fifths is our answer for 3 fifths divided by 1 fourth. So you can see that that was a fairly long process. That's the long way of dividing fractions. It does work, but we can use keep, switch, flip to be more efficient. Let's try keep, switch, flip as well and see how everything compares. So I'm going to rewrite the problem at the bottom of the screen here. So we have 3 fifths divided by 1 fourth. So let's keep, switch, flip. So keep our first fraction, 3 fifths, switch to multiplication, and then flip our second fraction. We get 4 over 1. And then we multiply straight across. We get 12 fifths, the same answer we got when we used the long way. And we convert this to a mixed number, which is 2 and 2 fifths. So you can see, look up here, and you'll notice that we have 3 fifths times 4 over 1. The same thing we have down here. Now keep, switch, flip, again, is a much quicker process here. We're always going to end up with the same thing here and here. So why not cut out all of the extra parts of that process and just jump straight to keep, switch, flip. So that's why we do keep, switch, flip when we divide fractions. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.